requesting you to start today's webinar. Okay. Thank you, Vishal. Uh, I hope I'm audible to all. Perfect. Okay. Good and the very best afternoon to everyone. Myself, Sanjeev Khinnawar, Director in Aero Electricals India Private Limited, Mumbai based switchboard manufacturer, also current president of COSMA. Indeed, it is a great privilege for me to extend on behalf of COSMA board warm welcome with open arms to all the participants for showing up to our today's technical seminar conducted by Messing Systems. Let us all cheer them with a big round of applause for coming forward to educate us. Little bit about uh, Messang. Messang is an Indian multinational company founded in 1981, based at Pune, headed by Farooq Merchant, student of COEP, that is College of Engineering, Pune. To their credit, they are the first to indigenously develop and manufacture the PLC in India. Companies into automation business. You name the sector, their presence is there, like building, infrastructure, industrial, home, offices, hotels, hospitals, and they are into power distribution and control, energy management, test and measuring instruments, electronics assemblies. Uh, also one more they have, that is the workplace and clean room ergonomics. It is, I think, different from automation, it looks, this business. <laughs> so today they will be covering, topic one is the electrical distribution and control as per IC6149 standards by Srikanth Venkateshappa, based at Germany key international manager, owner Germany. Topic two is power quality, monitoring and measurement of harmonics as per IEEE 519 standards by Hari Bala Subramanian, based in Dubai, head sales Southeast Asia. So for now, the, those who are not the members of Cosma, who have joined non-members of Cosma, I, will, I would like to brief a little bit about Cosma. Uh, for, the, for those who are non-members of the COSMA, COSMA stands for Control Panel and Switchgear Manufacturer Association, established on 8th October 1988 by four people, Satish Kaji of Jai Engineering Works, Kamlakar Phadke of Switchetronics, Asip Mujumdar of Kashit Management, and Navin Shah of Pioneer Electric, all were Bombay-based control panel manufacturing companies. We are very lucky to have one founder member amongst us, Satish Kaji sir. Kaji sir, please greet everyone. Okay. Mm -hmm. Satish Kaji sir. Hmm? Holding position of chairman emeritus of Cosma. The Cosma is more than three decades of existence, having its own office in Vikroli, Mumbai, with office executive Manuel Dewey. His name is Manuel Dewey. On 31st December 2017, Cosma registered under Section 81 of Companies Act 2013. Currently, we have 400 members spread across 17, 20 states of India. Two furthest members are in Assam. We have about 70 members from Bangalore, about 200 members from Mumbai and Pune region. Rest spread across different states of India. Few renowned names like uh, L Major, EAP, Electronic Automation Private Limited, Proc Devices, ConnectWell, Polycab, RR Cable, Washi Electrical are our members and well-wishers of COSMA fraternity. Objectives of COSMA is to fight for dignity of our business with unity, elevate and upgrade knowledge of members technically and commercially, bring closer control panel and switchgear manufacturers, creating brotherhood, forming business community, have a common platform, fostering better relations and unity, avoid animosity, provides intangible benefits such as networking, a sense of community, common purpose, opportunity to volunteer, making friends across boundaries, empowering to collaboration. You can network among your own field of people. Since our, our network is our network, you know. Mm -hmm. We get opportunity to learn among more intelligent people than us, than ourselves. You can share your business problems with among yourselves, 
you may get accidentally out of the box solution which can be turning point for your company for example if you have faced some bad experience with customer who are not paid timely or ended up not paying at all similarly with your vendors took advance payment and ended up not supplying materials or not having paid vat gst etc mutually exchange service engineers for servicing customers instead of pan india traveling uh, you will cover you can be you will get the knowledge of you know so so things are available on the uh, in a collective way that is software tax consultant vendors available machineries etc inventories you can share inventories also mutually learn to collaborate and have a healthy competitive competition among ourselves activities fellowship programs knowledge sharing programs factory visits in association with switzer manufacturers brings out special edition of cosma news alongside electrama exhibition also participating in the electrama exhibition biennial award functions to recognize electrical industry contributors cosma is instituted instituted cosma ratna cosma gauro cosma sitara lifetime achievement awards so my appeal you know every category of business have their own uh, respective associations for example even uh, uh, loading unloading and transportation people have it so why not we technocrats we do not know our strength that collectively we are a huge buying power so requesting you to become the member for further strengthening the association for collective lobbying with any government bodies business houses etc so one proverb that is we sticks in bundles are unbreakable so more the numbers more the unity so i request who are non members of in uh, attendance in uh, those who are non members of the association today's uh, session ask them to join us to march forward but one thing becoming a member is not end in itself you will have to you will have a fascinating fascinating excited journey ahead provided you take a active participate in it so more details about membership fees application form uh, about our uh, activities vision mission everything is there in the website we have put in the chat box website address as well as the contact person office executive person uh, his manual the way all the contact details his mail id everything is put in the chat box people can go through that uh, if, if they are more interested uh, they can contact us directly also so lastly my humble request to those who are not members of the association kindly become the association member and take the benefits of the association i think from my side that's it i request uh, anand ji you will have to say you have to share something to the audience uh, thank you sanju bhai ran bhai yeah yes. yeah uh, yeah is yes. actually uh, regarding the cosma there is uh, many of the things uh, sanju sir has already told but there is some small thing uh, which i'll just tell you so, uh, so there are total 5600 uh, control panel switch gear and accessories manufacturers all over india and our main intention is to uh, bring all of them under one roof of cosma so for uh, only office in bombay or office in uh, bangalore or somewhere will not uh, be able to gather 5600 member within a short span of say one or two years so we have decided to decentralize uh, this total work and we have made one membership kit with the form and over each member in cosma say around 400 members are there i each members in cosma should bring at least 10 members Uh, as a aim for their getting everybody together uh, we have made that particular kit so i am sending sharing that kit on our email addresses and whatsapps so uh, it is my humble request to each and every member to work for cosma and get at least 10 members in one year span so if we can gather 10 members per uh, member then 400 multiplied by 10 that is 4000 members will be the additional strength up to electrama so this is the only thing i just wanted to share that membership kit what we have um, made is having everything what cosma is already doing the
and there is one form uh, which is to be getting the only thing i wanted to say i don't want to waste more time and i uh, shift this mic to mesum so uh, over to mesum please uh, over to farooq merchant i think uh, going to speak. yeah farooq bhai uh, just before you begin i i have shared one link of facebook in chat box i request you and your team to share with your other members yes, so sir. the people who are in the waiting because we have capacity of 100 members of here only yeah. so they can join us on facebook so can i start sir uh, yeah please go ahead so first of all i uh, uh, want to wish uh, uh, satish kaji sir the dawn of uh, you can say the dawn of cosma for the wonderful work that he has done for setting up this in a beautiful setup of cosma believe me i have a member of cosma since about a year plus and uh, the way your uh, this group is organized is so professional i mean it reminds me of indian machine tool manufacturers association imtma which started in 78 your group is as organized as that and that i really give credit to the president and all the past and present members to make it so strong and having in one minute 100 members on the on the on the chat uh, on this uh, meeting is something very very nice to see um so thank you yeah. thank you i would like to say that mesung has been in this business from 1981 uh, we designed india's first plc and 40 years later i am again designing the plc one of the only indian manufacturer to make the plc but today's evening is for electrical engineering and as i always feel that we must bring world class technology to india at an affordable price so today we are bringing two german companies one wuna germany who is going to the mr shrikant venkateshappa shrikant is going to present ic 61439 a very difficult standard to understand if really somebody wants to do it seriously and something that will make our panel builders our electrical panel builders apne indian electrical panel builders world class wo jo the thappa is there that made in india is not so good has to go if we want to make things of a very high quality this is what shrikant will be presenting uh, subsequently after for uh, mr haripala yeah mr haripala will be giving us an idea about energy management and haripala represents janitz germany he is stationed out of dubai and uh, during his presentation he will also speak about himself today we are going to bring the technology or the uh, the knowledge of ieee 519 dash uh, 2014 a very difficult standard again to understand but which is going to be implemented in india in the near future in in different form or whatever it is and the type of work janitza is doing for the indian market so this is what haribala will be presenting uh, without much ado i will request now shrikant to talk about uh, IC six one four three nine and yeah one of us. Okay, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Farooq, and uh, especially thank uh, Cosma and his members to give us an opportunity, uh, such as uh, this, uh, just to talk uh, from our side. And before I start, just a short brief introduction about myself. Yeah, uh, I am from India, but have been settled here in Germany for almost twelve years. I'm from Bangalore. and i will look after uh, most of asia pacific countries uh, from middle east uh, to australia new zealand Ch and um, singapore and these countries are all surrounding them and uh, india and um, yeah especially uh, i would be focusing much more in india right now um, yeah this is a brief introduction about me and uh, so let us start with the uh, presentation yeah so uh, this uh, the present the whole uh, presentation is a general idea about ul standards and ic 6149 it's a just a brief introduction uh, usually we have a technical training or uh, information sessions uh, about the standards here in local in germany at our office and this goes about almost 3 4 days to at least a minimum of 2 days and the whole information how try to squeeze it in almost 30 minutes uh, whatever is possible and what would make sense uh, for this time available uh, what i would suggest is uh, 
uh, once we finish uh, this uh, we be uh, kind of the presentation i'm open for questions and if you are able to answer these questions uh, after, during this webinar we can always uh, get back to us through email and we can briefly help out regarding the standards or any other queries so uh, let us start uh, let's start with the ul standards uh, maybe you have heard about ul standards in some of the switch gears or some other requirement maybe you were aware about uh, the standards uh, already uh, so just to give a brief idea uh, what is this ul standards so what is this ul ul stands for underwriters laboratory uh, this is kind of organization very similar to cosma it's uh, it's in usa and uh, it's an independent organization and it's a non profit where their people have come together and uh, they have set up uh, tests and they have also set up standards what is required uh, in the electrical installation in us and canada so that's what uh, the ul uh, the whole uh, ul standard or the ul uh, of company means and uh, ul uh, as a company it tests all the electrical devices uh, and also the cabinets and electrical installations and it has its own safety norms and it has its own uh, ul uh, inspectors and ul laboratories and that means if a electrical device uh, has an ul specification or a switch gear has a ul specification uh, this literally means that it has been tested in an ul uh, lab uh, so just to give an idea there are around 1000 standards in ul it's not only particular to industry from housing to very small electrical installation electrical equipment to very large airport installations so very large uh, electrical installation there are standards set by ul and uh, this ul standard is applicable uh, as i said only to usa and canada and this is not uh, enforced by government that is that means it's not a government rules or regulation and uh, in us they would call it as federal government it's not enforced by federal government but it is enforced by local states or local governments or maybe the client uh, who is making the setup he would uh, require this ul uh, uh, standards to be present so uh, now uh, what is applicable to us as a panel builder ul so uh, the applicable standard would be ul 508a uh, or 508 Uh, this is the standard which applies to panel builders or assembly of switch gears uh, especially for industrial uh, control panels industrial control panels and uh, how uh, the standard is usually applied is uh, there are panel builders who are already ul uh, approved panel builders so uh, ul uh, a person from ul who would uh, certify a panel builder he would come and inspect uh, the panel builder what are his capabilities and he would build up a ul file and this ul file would contain uh, the all the information about this panel builder what are his capacities and what he can do and what he cannot do uh, and uh, once this has been done then he is kind of certified ul panel builder and whatever his panel building uh, he is able to put the ul logo on this panel and also uh, all the information about the panel as required by the standard on this ul and uh, this panel is ready to be installed in any of the uh, united states or canada uh, electrical installation for this uh, information from our colleagues from us uh, what we know is that uh, for this approval for a panel builder to be approved in ul is about 10000 15000 us dollars and uh, this ul approved panel builder has not necessarily has to be present in us so we have we know that uh, there are panel builders in uh, europe panel builders in uh, korea and other countries were uh, panel builders were approved by ul and that means that they are able to export or make installation in us uh, how it could be implied to us or where it would make sense also for india it would be that uh, uh, if a machine installation is done in us or if uh, us is importing a machinery from europe or from india or from any other countries and it is uh, and there is a local requirement by the law that it has to be a, it has to satisfy ul standards then it is the responsibility of the machine builder or the machine supplier to make sure the entire system is ul proof and that means there there is going to be a local inspector is going to visit and going to say okay this is according to ul and this is has been built so indirectly if uh, we are not directly selling to us but we are selling it to some exporting to europe or other machine manufacturers worldwide and 
and the final installation is in us so that means that again still the ul norms would be applied and uh, just to give an broad idea if is ul norms is is, is it very similar to iec standards uh, i would say definitely not it's uh, quite different and uh, the requirements are much more uh, comparatively in certain area very stringent and tough uh, i think maybe this is due to uh, the how the construction or the housing is done in us and maybe it's not uh, as similar to uh, europe or other part of uh, india or other parts of the world so ul norms are much more strict and uh, much more stringent in certain aspect uh, so that's that's about uh, our ul uh, standards uh, and uh, from a owner side we have uh, expertise uh, in ul and we have an office on manufacturing in uh, uh, usa and we have a ul uh, expertise team there and if any uh, if you are working with exports and if anything comes up uh, then we'll be happy to help you technically uh, to understand ul or to bring about your panel according to the ul standards coming down to iec so iec 6149 is the new standards uh, from comparative from before uh, 60489 uh, which has updated uh, just to give a brief idea of what does it contain us 6 iec 6149 so it contains uh, uh, how the panel has been assembled and what are the conditions uh, on what are the minimum oh. Uh, requirements how the panel should uh, maintain uh, so that uh, uh, it works uh, for safety reasons that it works properly and uh, it's much more safe uh, which may be in the construction we don't see that the accident may happen but after installation after long use there is a possibility there could be hazards and this could be avoided uh, if we follow up the 6149 uh, these are uh, these norms or standards are uh, not just uh, raw information. It's actually uh, tests or uh, kind of research already made, created, made and noted down uh, by an organization. So uh, this is a relatively very useful information, and uh, I would suggest that to get these uh, standards and go through each uh, standards and how it would make sense. Uh, before I go move through uh, my presentation, I would just like to show you how the standard uh, would look like. Yeah, so this is the IEC standard uh, file, and this is you can see is a license to us, and you can see the standard and uh, each and every possible details about uh, uh, what is the uh, voltage and what is the requirement is uh, written down in very, very specific details. And that means there is no room for interpretation. There is no room for discussion. Everything is specified. Uh, maybe if I go to, uh, so, uh, Yeah, so uh, here is, it goes back. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, here is an example what I wanted to show. This is kind of a table where, uh, which shows uh, on uh, rating of a uh, bus bar, how much current current carrying capacity is there uh, for it could, a bus bar can carry. I know in India, we use general a multiplying factor, like if it's a copper, uh, the cross-section into 1.5 with the current rating or one, uh, so it's generally not according to IEC standard. IEC standard would say something like this. So what is the current rating here is an example. It's 20 ampere. And what would, the, what would be the cross section if it's a solid uh, bus bar or the st standard bus bar? What would be the cross section minimum required and maximum it would allow? Also for flexible, what would be required? And uh, uh, here is an example that uh, not only cross section, it uh, depends on uh, two things. One is uh, the outside temperature or uh, the uh, temperature influence on the bus bar. Here you can see. And K would be the insulation material, what is being used. So that would determine what would be the right cross sectional area of bus bar to be used in IC standard. Uh, here it's clearly written down in the table. You just have to follow the table and then uh, it is according to standard. Uh, so that just to give an idea, so the IC standards is much more very 
self uh, explanatory and everything is written down much more in clearly uh, coming back to our presentation yeah so here in ic 1649 Uh, what does it say? Who is responsible? What is responsible for a panel builder? Uh, who, uh, for a panel builder? So, for panel builder, he is responsible for to verify the switch gear and the combination. What he is using uh, that it meets the standards, uh, the IEC standard, and also uh, once he is making this combination or the construction, this is according to standards. Uh, what is written down as I shown on the example in IEC section four three nine two two to seven. Uh, so that he follows each and every aspects written in this, and in case of any uh, damage or any uh, problem occur occurring after the installation, uh, here would be the priority. How uh, the IEC would say that who is responsible. So, in the new standards, it would make the panel builder initially responsible for any kind of damage or hazard cost, and then would come original manufacturer, and third would be looked into the user. So that would be the priority. So that means uh, the whole focus with the new standards is uh, uh, now uh, focusing on panel builder and uh, is quite installation and it's not before it was much more on uh, switch gear manufacturers and how it was constructed now is much more on how it has combined and how it's working together. So uh, that's a brief overview of uh, IEC six one forty nine and what it contains and once. Uh, you have gone through the standards and you have built the panel according to what the standard has written so then uh, you need to verify whether i my panel what i have built is it according to the iec 6149 so for this uh, the standard itself gives a procedures it's called design verification or verification of your panel according to 6149 uh, as you may already know this are like two parts one is the construction how it has been constructed and second part is the performance uh regarding the constructions uh, and each and every here you can see it's, uh, it's clearly mentioned what uh, needs to be tested or what needs to be looked into so that uh, we can guarantee that 6439 as the panel has been uh, constructed according to 6139 and if you take one 10.2 example here uh yeah so uh, each uh, and every uh, test what is uh, required here uh it can be solved in three ways what it would uh, or the is the standard would say that either you can uh, guarantee that it meets the standard by actual testing or you, uh, by comparison with the design that means you have already tested a panel uh, which was already i on 49 tested or third uh, by actual assessment As assessment is just uh, calculations and you just assess physically whether it matched and here in this table it clearly shows what test uh, what uh, requirement uh, can be assessed that okay it can be uh, tested or uh, whether it can be there is no need for test we can just accept by comparison or there is no need for test and uh, comparison required we can just only assess and say ah okay this is okay with it so here is an example if it's like thermal stability Uh, you can satisfy these IEC six hundred fifty nine standards either by testing or uh, by simply assessing that uh, according to the calculation uh, whether this uh, matches the six hundred fifty nine. So uh, coming down to testing comparison assessment. So how do we test it? How do we compare or how do we assess? This is again clearly uh, described or written down in uh, in the standard itself. Um, here is an example. So. here uh, the first one is like uh, resistance of corrosion here they clearly describes if you mean by test how the test should be carried out and uh, what should be the expected result and if the expected result are there then we can confirm that if it's passed if it's not there then it, it is failed so the all the three comparison of reference design testing and assessment uh for each and every requirement example like uh, lifting of uh the panel what you have been made uh, so it can be only uh, assessed only by testing you actually physically lifting the panel and then it uh, clearly describes in the test how do you lift the panel and how how, how much height it has to be lifted and uh, what what is the outcome of the uh, test what it has what you look into and if that test uh, if results are achieved then you say okay this is design is verified for this panel and uh, 
that does that mean that uh, the new panel which has been built whether it can be assessed uh, by new, only by looking or only by comparison that you have made that uh, panel t- lifting test in one panel that means that this the new panel what you have built is again already design verified the, then the standard would say no example like lifting so if there is s then clearly a procedure is written so that also again means the standard is self explanatory and there's lot of information on how a test is made and what is the result expected and how it's assessed so everything is written down uh, in this standard uh, coming down to the group of standard tests what we have seen from strength of material the degree of uh, protection of like ip ip enclosure and all these tests uh, the mo- most of the difficult part uh, most of the things can be achieved by just following uh, the tables and paragraphs what we seen standard the difficult part comes in uh, the performance uh, test what we made and this perfo- uh, and in inside this performance uh, there are two tests which are very difficult what we have found that most of our um, uh, partners find it difficult is the short short circuit test and temperature rise test the short circuit test is mostly difficult because uh, uh, switch gear they have their own short circuit rating but uh, you are mixing up cables and wires and uh, this uh, short circuit tested uh, switch gears and this combination we are there is no guarantee that uh, this would withstand the required short circuit uh, requirement according to standard so that's one of the difficult uh, problems and also temperature rise test again because you are using different kind of materials you don't know what is the content of the material what you are using so this also becomes very difficult uh, in assessing uh, or to just pass the test or assess that it would uh the panel would match the iec requirement so this we find are the two uh difficult uh, parts uh, with our experience so uh before we move forward uh, in much more into detail with iec just to want to give you a brief idea about owner so the owner was established in 1929 in rodental uh, we are located in uh, bavaria it's southern part of germany and this is uh, established in 1929 and uh, we have production units in uh, four parts of the world that's in germany in china and us and brazil uh, most of the product which we are exported out is only from germany and other countries what we are manufacturing it's for their own consumption here you can see this is the manufacturing bay in uh, germany and most of our production is automated uh, especially in germany we have also r&d centers uh, located in uh, where our production sites are from uh, germany china and us and brazil and here uh, you can see this is uh, our office in china uh, just to give you an overview of uh, what is our sales and how big is our company or uh, we are kind of medium size company it's still family owned the ch- third generation of the family is right running around the business in 2019 we had a consolidated sales of around 117 million euros in indian rupees it's around 1000 uh, 1046 crores uh, 1000 crores plus i think this is the uh, revenue what we had in 2019 uh, total we are around uh, 773 people around the world and we are present in around 19 locations with our own subsidiaries uh, right now in india so uh, to get a brief idea of what does owner uh, provide or what is our bus what we call it as a bus pass system uh, traditionally as we know uh, that uh, we have r by b uh, the bus pass running on top of the cabinets and to attach the switch gear uh, we usually drill holes in the bus pass with nut we put nut and bolt and uh, we are powering up the switch gear in the, this way this we call it as a traditional uh, system and what we do with owner is uh, instead of drilling and putting nut and bolt we directly mount uh, switch gear onto the bus pass and uh, how we do this is that uh, we have adapters we can directly mount onto the bus pass and this this kind of a click click in solution that means uh, there is no mechanical work or mechanical drilling uh, is required and this much more kind of a lego system what you have for the uh, electrical installation uh just to give an idea about uh, our bus bus system presence this was introduced to uh, to the world by us in 1980 uh, 80 80 81 82 
and uh, then uh, it slowly developed into the market uh, unfortunately this system is very well known in germany but and also in europe but uh, relatively not well known uh, in outside europe uh, what we could say and that means that if you are uh, importing some machines uh, some installations from europe uh, then if you open up uh, the cabinets then maybe you have seen this installations uh little bit more details about uh, uh, the bus pass system uh, not only uh, just if you are connecting cables or kind of bus pass what we we call it we have a clamps called example is kind of spider clamp where uh, instead of drilling and connecting the bus bar to bus bar you just uh, put two bus bar remove the insulations maybe if it's flexible and you just clamp in clamp on to the bus bar and you uh, tighten the torque which is mentioned on the clamp and then that's it so we call it as also a maintenance free uh, installation and all these clamps are uh, spring loaded uh, that means uh, that uh, even with time there is no need for uh, maintenance because it's going to expand and contract according to uh, how uh, the bus bar is expanding contracting and this would also remove the any need for tightening of uh, maintenance and tightening of screws and nuts and bolts because you are not using it and also uh, since you are not drilling the bus bar the short circuit value and also the current carrying capacity of the bus bar it won't change and uh, it would keep it as simple as it is so clamps is one of our solutions from small cables here you can see from 1.5 and we have a really up to big uh, bus bars uh, to be attached directly to the bus bars and for uh, mcb and uh, contactor combination we have what we call as an adapter where you mount uh, the mcb and contactor onto adapter and you mount this uh, adapter directly onto the bus bar uh, that means like you just click this unit onto the bus bar uh, this we have from uh, small uh, 16 ampere single pole mcb adapter up to 1250 mccb big adapter so it's a different range according to the power rating it's available. So another advantage what we have with the adapter is we call it as a cross-link technology. Uh, is that uh, this adapter uh, can be have two parts. One, you can dismount the front part with the live current behind. That means that if you have uh, maybe a, a lighting panel with uh, 80 lights and 80 MCBs, uh, if there is any problem with the uh, panel or any problem with the installation, you don't have to switch off the entire panel, just uh, switch off the required MCB and then you can dismount the front part with the contactor and with the live current behind that without any switching off uh, any the entire panel. So this, uh, this could be an additional advantage for any process lines, maybe you don't have to shut off the processors and you can keep other process running and just uh, repair or work on uh, the adapters or on the exact problem where it's there. And this also has a micro switch possibility where you can also pre-program uh, what is the situation of the adapter and to give monitor uh, whether uh, it's on or off or whether it's on working mode. So this is kind of an additional advantage what it brings in uh, with uh, the solution. So just to summarize, uh, it's we are reducing the size of the panel from an, uh, different heights, and all the installation is installed uh, inside a height of 200 millimeters. And the bus bus system uh, by itself is already conferring to form two, and we have you can build the system from one to five poles. And uh, uh, I think the right now the three important points what is relevant for us is that. Uh, we have made already the design verification for IEC 6149 for all the bus bar connections, what we made. That means that we have already pre-tested the short circuit rating and also we have pre-tested the temperature rise test. So what just getting into much more in details, uh, the short circuit testing or the short circuit uh, testing is required according to IEC 6149. Uh, to understand briefly what happens uh, during a short circuit, so I have a short video so already ready. So these are three bus bars here running. And uh, 
uh, here you can see when there is a short circuit, there is this kind of electrodynamic loading on uh, the switch gears and the bus bars running. It means there is a mechanical vibration which goes on, and uh, with high current, there's possibility that even the parts of the bus bar melts down, and you can see it, uh, this energy release, so it flies off from the bus bar. So uh, this is what physically happening uh, during a short circuit. Uh, short circuit current being passed into a cabinet. So yeah, I have some uh, test videos also right now. So these are kind of uh, tests, uh, I would say, which have failed uh, the IC6149 tests. Uh, here are some of the video, what, just to observe what happens during a short circuit. Test. You can see in with very short period of time, there's a lot of energy release and uh, flying of energy is like melted copper. Just another thing. Yeah, so again, I have, according to IC, this would have failed the yeah, IC test. So here you can see with the short slow down motion, there's a lot of energy release in very millimeter, uh, millimeter seconds. Yeah, so uh, that's the short circuit. And uh, to make sure that your panel is not catching fire due to short circuit or uh, then that means that uh, the panel is passing the IEC 6.4 standard. Uh, this is what is allowed. So short circuit withstand strength. Uh, you can guarantee that your panel would withstand the strength is only by testing. Here you can see it's yes. That means uh, you have to make the test. And then once the test is made, then the proof is done. Then you cannot reuse this panel. So it's only a uh, test. And this can be used just for reference. So that is uh, comparison is allowed. The comparison is allowed for short circuits. Uh, that means mm, uh, if you have already uh, short circuit tested one of your panel, the same uh, reference design can be used. That if you are building one more panel with the same reference, then you can refer to the already tested panel, and then uh, your panel is satisfying the standards. So, what do you mean by a reference? You can see. Uh, the IEC has, this is again a table from the standard. He has a list of questions, like one to three, four, one to 10. Once you are making uh, a comparison or a reference decent test, so we, you have to answer each and every question. Uh, and uh, if, if one comes no, that means that yeah, your panel is not satisfying the standard. If, uh, if all co are coming yes, that means you are satisfying uh, the standard. Uh, yeah, so uh, what does this question contain is usually it's always referring back to whether uh, the uh, the example, the bus bar size, what you're using in your new panel, whether is it uh, matching the reference design panel, what you have made short circuit test, does it, is it uh, same or much more bigger? If yes, then you can have to click yes, and then when you have passed, then you just have to follow through this uh, uh, questions and then you, you once everything is yes then you are assessed that okay this my panel is uh, IEC 6149 short circuit ready and you can also be sure that in any kind of possible way if there is a short circuit your panel is not going to catch a fire or we have any hazards effect surrounding it so uh, in order to help you to build or achieve the standard what we have done is uh, we have already pre-tested the bus bar and its combination uh, for short circuit values. That means example, here is an example. Uh, IPH is kind of a um, testing lab, maybe in India it's like CPRI uh, India and its IPH is similar to that. And what we have made is uh, we have made various combination of bus bar and bus bar holders. And uh, we have made the test. Here is a photo from the test here. You can see this is after test how it would look. Uh, what we have done is uh, we have taken the worst case for a bus bar, that means uh, here we have no MCBs or uh, fuse, fuse holders to protect during the test. So that 
we have made the test without any protection is one of the best case possible and also we have made enclosure inside this cabinet and in for this bus bars and we have tested uh, this possibility for all possible worst case scenarios and uh, we have the reports ready with the short circuit value how much it can withstand and uh, how this would help uh, i think you, this is example uh, this is a question from the table what i showed you earlier uh, like the table where you make the reference design test uh, this is kind of second question here you can see uh, are the cross sectional dimension of bus bar on the circuit connection each circuit of tested switch gear greater than or equal to the reference design the reference design is we can refer now if uh, you are using owner solution as as the reference design and what we have done is uh, we have made uh, different sizes here is the bus bar sizes 12 into 10 12 into 5 13 to 10 13 to 5 20 we have uh, made a combination of many bus bar sizes and we have pre tested with different uh, clearances from bus bar support this is the distance between two bus bars and this is this short circuit value of what we have achieved uh, achieved uh, this is the results from the test and uh, this table can be used uh, for you so that you maintain the same distance between two bus bars and uh, you can guarantee that uh, the system what you're building can withstand such uh, short circuit current uh, here just to read example if you're taking 13 to 10 bus bar and if you are uh, taking two bus bar supports and with a distance of 200 millimeter and uh, that means the system what you have built can withstand up to 70 ka uh, so this uh, is what you get from the table this is our table but uh, behind this table stands a report uh, like this and this report can be provided by us and uh, with this report you'll be able to answer uh, the reference design question here and click yes 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 and then your panel is uh, short circuit uh, uh, ready or tested according to IEC 6439 and ready to go. Uh, this is one way how uh, owner can help you in achieving this standard. And I think the another test what I informed is a uh, temperature rise test. Uh, so this is one of the difficult parts where here is a, yeah, one more example of uh, a table from uh, the standard temperature rise. And here uh, it uh, mentions what are the different uh, parts inside the cabinet and how much uh, temperature differences uh, here it, in IEC, they call it as Kelvin. It's not actual Kelvin, it's a temperature difference, what it's allowed compared to ambient. That means uh, if you have a metal part inside your cabinet, maybe it could be a screw or it could be a nut and bolt, then what it allows is only 15 degrees. That means uh, if the ambient temperature is 30, uh, the nut and bolt should not be above uh, 30 plus 15, that is like 45 degree temperature. It should not go above 45 degrees. Or here example is terminal for extended insulated. Uh, if there is connecting terminals, if you're making a joint of cable to a bus bar, and according to IC standard, the allowed uh, temperature rise is 70 degrees. That means if your amb ambient temperature is 30 degrees, uh, then uh, the connection joint should not go above 100 degrees ac uh, according to IC standard. So this is a table given uh, by IC standard, which needs to be followed. And uh, yeah, if you're coming down to the temperature rise test, what is allowed and how uh, in IC standard, and how we can guarantee that uh, your panel is according to IC standard. Here, all the three is allowed. That means uh, you can... Uh, do the test and then okay it's allowed or you have already made the test and you can refer the test that is also allowed assessment is also allowed assessment assessment means uh, uh, the ic standard has set of calculations and you just have to calculate uh, with the information from your panel and once you put in this information and calculate yourself and then uh, you have a value and you have following this value and once uh, somebody is assessing it, it just checks if calculation is right and this is allowed. Uh, but uh, that again comes down to calculating each and every connections and each and every parts what you are using. And uh, also be sure that what uh, you are checking for the material is, is what, uh, what your supplier claims it is to be. So there is some kind of complications when you are uh, taking the assessments. Uh, mostly the testing and comparison is normally used. Uh, in standard. So what we have also done for this temperature rise test is, 
uh, exam is with the same lab here you can see uh, we have made a combination we have made the temperature rise test already for you already we have done it for you uh, that means uh, we have made uh, these are the clamps and cable joint with flexible bus bar with direct bus bars and uh, this is the load attached this is the report screenshot from the report and here are the temperature measurements what we have done it already and that means that uh, uh, there are different ambient temperatures and uh, different current passed and how much uh, there was a temperature rise in each joints whether and if the temperature rise uh, was it satisfy according to the ic requirements so here is an example so the whole setup was for 1260 ampere and example the cable connection was copper and allowed according to ic 1649 was 70 degrees the ambient was 29.9 they measured 57 so the delta was around 37 so allowed was 70 and we have achieved 37.6 that means it satisfies the standard without any problem uh, so uh, that's kind of uh, overview that means that you can use uh, the same uh, if you're using our clamp and the combination of uh, any flexible bus bars or cables with the clamp uh, that means you already have uh, the temperature rise test made and you can use our test what we have made as a reference and then you can guarantee that this is how much maximum temperature the connection joint would reach and this would also satisfy uh, as per the requirement uh, the verification required so uh, not only uh, the temperature rise and short circuit here you can see we have already done other performance tests like dielectric properties mechanical operations clearance and creeping uh, is i think this at least the last three are performance tests so these are ic tests and uh, we have already pre done and, uh, all these tests and this can be used by you uh, once you are just using the clamp that means you are already satisfying all the standards and it is backed by the certificate and tests from us and this can be used uh, to build a really a quality panel and to satisfy any client requirement that your panel is according to IC standard. Okay, that's a brief view about our panels. Here are some of the application examples of uh, our bus bus system built. Uh, this is, uh, I think, uh, a sorting plant. That is means uh, it's, this is exactly a kind of potato sorting uh, process plant where you can see uh, the bus bar system being used and you can see the entire bus bar system where it's empty, it's been enclosed. So uh, it provides an IP20 protection for the entire system. And uh, here uh, with this uh, uh, particular example, the whole panel was rated up to 630 ampere and it was a drive panel. And uh, we were able to reduce the entire cabinet almost 30%. And uh, uh, the time also we were able to reduce for around 30 percent so totally from five cabinets we were able to reduce down to three cabinets so that's kind of a size a saving what you would get with the uh, uh, owner bus pass system i would say uh, here is an example from uh, bangalore uh, this is coca-cola plant in bangalore and uh, this is their bottling and string ramping machines and here inside, you uh, once you open the cabinets here, you can see uh, Coca-Cola has a collaboration with um, and partnership with Siemens. So all their machines and most of their machines are using Siemens switch gears. Uh, here you can see, uh, and uh, our, our system is much more uh, not brand specific. So you will be able to use uh, um, any multiple brands. And here, especially in this plant, uh, they were using the Siemens uh, switch gears. And here you can see this is a bus bus system, uh, Siemens MCCB and other MCBs, and these are fuse holders directly mounted onto the bus bar. And especially for this large process and machines, and this only consumes very small space for the entire uh, panel. And all the other other things why uh, Coca Cola would decide uh, with our solution would be that it's safe. Even after you can see removing the panel, there are no terminals. Uh, which are exposed and you don't need to put any other covers, additional transparent covers or such. And it's much more safe and you don't have any access also if you want to physically uh, access uh, the power. And it's very easy to maintain. So as I said, there is no nut and bolt and it's much more clicking and click out solution. So 
if anything is damaged, you just switch off the panel and just click out the system and click in back. The entire uh, thing so it's much more faster and easier. And mainly, as you can see, it reduces the size uh, with uh, all the switch gear combination. And it's compatible here with Siemens, but it's also compa compatible with uh, all other major switch gear manufacturers. Uh, here's an uh, example for wind turbines. Uh, we are partnered with Cold Wind, uh, wind turbines from China, and they also produce 1.5 to 2 megawatt of power distribution of, uh, of wind turbines. And for their uh, low voltage power distribution, here you can see a system. They're using few switch disconnectors by us, and uh, the entire system low voltage distribution uh, uh, is from us. This is an example for wind turbine. Uh, this is an example for a CNC machine. Uh, this CNC machine is called Taurus, one of the really big size CNC machines, and it is uh, manufactured in Kubo, uh, very near to us. And uh, yeah, you can see for the entire machine, this is the cabinet where we are squeezed in uh, machine motor controls and MCBs, everything into a small, very small panel. And this is one of our newest uh, applications, what we have uh, with the CNC machines. So we are also in a large power distribution. This is uh, our football stadium in Munich, uh, it's Allianz Arena. And uh, the whole football stadium is powered up uh, with our power distribution uh, here in Germany. Uh, we also make customized solution for big projects. So here is an example. So Queen Mary is a cruise ship. I think it goes between UK and US. And uh, the entire electrical system is uh, made by us. And this was, there were a lot of uh, specific requirements and customization required and we were open to work on this and uh, the entire electric system is using bus bus system and it's uh, using owner bus bus system. Uh, yeah, one of our newest uh, clients or newest application is uh, for uh, supercharging stations for Tesla. Uh, the power distribution is from 1000 to 50 ampere and they are, each charging station is around 400 ampere. And uh, here you can see they are using uh, our bus bus system where the incomer is around 1050. Uh, so the joint collaboration with Eaton and here you can see it's all Eaton switch gear uh, with uh, special adapters only for Eaton. And then uh, um, the power distribution is for high current. And, um, so this is one of our newest uh, uh, application examples. So uh, just to summarize how uh, owner can help uh, you in achieving these standards. One is that uh, the connection joints or the clamps or the bus bar holders, we have already pre-tested uh, all the standard requirements, what the IEC requires. And that means that there is no necessary for you to make uh, additional tests and you to invest in this test. Uh, and you can just for follow up use our clamps and use our bus bus supports and we'll provide the reports for you. Uh, and not only reports, uh, this is according to the standard, we have foreseen what uh, the IEC would allow for a reference design. So that means we are satisfying this reference design requirement. That means that you don't have to make your own test, which is going to be expensive for us. And, and if you're making your own short circuit test in a lab, it's going to be very expensive. This would avoid that and uh, Regarding adapters, what I mean by adapters is we have uh, special adapters for MCBs or MCCBs. If you want to mount a, a Siemens MCB or a Schneider or a Eaton, uh, we have already made various combination of uh, different switchgear manufacturers uh, with this adapter. That means we already made a short circuit test <coughs> for this particular switchgear uh, with this connection joints. So that means that uh, already your panel is short circuit tested uh, with this switch gear manufacturer. You don't have to make again a particular brand related uh, short circuit protection. Just have to use our ad adapter where we have made this adapter switch gear combination test and uh, this would be helpful for you. And in our website, uh, we have a IG documentation software. That means that uh, it's kind of a checklist. Uh, you just have to put your complete details and uh, you have to just answer the questions in this checklist. Once you end this uh, answers, then you can take an output of the file. Uh, so this you can use as a documentation for your particular panel, uh, stating that you, how your panel satisfies the IEC standards. So this software is available free for everyone to use. 
and uh, this can be used uh, by you right now to to make your panel ready for IEC standards. Regarding UL, as I said, uh, we have a team in India and also in US, and uh, we have expertise in UL. If you are thinking about exporting to US and Canada, uh, we are here to help you out in achieving the standards and could be interesting market for, especially if it's export, either directly if you are exporting to US or indirectly if you are exporting to Middle East or Europe and which goes anyway, final installation is US, then you have to confer to UL standards. So in, we'll be able to help you in that way. And as we have seen that we guarantee highest quality and safety. Uh, in the end, there's also a uh, save of lot of saving of uh, labor time and effort and also the size. So that is an additional plus in the end, which would uh, bring with the uh, bus bus system and usage. So there was a short survey made regarding the image, uh, especially in Germany, how uh, the owner solution is viewed. Uh, so here you can see the owner uh, was viewed as uh, better than the competitors regarding the image factor uh, locally by in Germany. Okay, that was a brief uh, uh, discussion uh, from my side, and uh, yeah, I am open to questions. Can you unshare your screen? Yeah, I just unshared it. Yes. Any questions uh, uh, by the audience? Then uh, Shrikant can. Yeah, there are uh, there are questions in the chat box. Ah, okay. okay. One question is from somebody, uh, uh, Mr. Srikant. Hello, Mr. Srikant. UL 508A is for the electrical panel for the machine, but for the whole machine with UL safety, which UL standard need to follow? What are the changes required in electrical panel if you also need to provide whole machine as per UL safety, except UL 508. Yeah, UL 508 is for uh, industrial control panel. That's what literally it says. Uh, but uh, for uh, machines, it's, it depends on machine. From machine to machine, it's a different standard. So you have to let me know which machine. This is uh, UL 96, 94. It's quite different from machines to machine. UL 508 is only for industrial control panel. So you have to let us know which machine and then uh, we can have a look uh, how it would satisfy us. Second question is from load controls. Mr. Mahesh is asking that in the clamp connection, how CRM contact resistance maintained? I don't understand what is CRM. I don't know. He has written how CRM. I think Mahesh, uh, Mr. Mahesh must be here. He can come forward and ask the question in detail if he Mr. Mahesh from load control. Yes. Uh... Good evening, uh, this is Mahesh. Uh, it is a wonderful presentation. Uh, thank you for that. The CRM is contact resistance measurement between any bus bar. If you're taking any jumpers, the resistance between two plates. So uh, you were really, asking like, how do we maintain? Yeah, how much? Uh, uh, how much are you measured? How much contact resistance when you main, when you connect it through the clamp? Uh, I don't have. I don't have the specific value of this. I know we maintain this uh, contact resistance and uh, this connection uh, continuously yeah. uh, because our clamps are spring loaded. And uh, I, I, not, I don't have an exact number uh, right now. Maybe I'll have to just check back with the firm and get back to you regarding the, if there is any standard value for all the clamps or it could be different for different current ratings. Yeah. Okay, fine, thank you. Any other question by anybody? I don't see any No. Uh, if it is not there, then we can move forward, uh, Farooq Bhai. Yeah, yeah, Sanjeev Bhai. Sanjeev Bhai, you can never raise that question. Uh, from my side, one general question. Yes. There are two dots on O in owner. What yeah. are they happening? <laughs> I know <I, laughs> the owner. Uh, this thing, uh, family name or a person name? What is it? No, it's a family name. Owner is a family name. O dot is a German letter, unfortunately not present anywhere. Uh, oh, it's no. actually literally referred to O and E together. It's a word, letter, sorry, not present in other languages. Okay. Yeah. It's a family name. Oh. Okay. Uh, um, uh, in case anybody wants any information regarding, uh, regarding Vuna, products uh, i am putting up on the screen 
the uh, details of uh, how do I go into this presentation? So you have to contact Mr. Krishna Dhanorkar and I, sorry, somebody has unshared me. Uh, just a minute. Yeah. Is there camera? Is it like that? Just go to share screen. Yeah, correct. I'm having some problem with my. Uh, no problem. Then, Farooq, you can do one thing. You can uh, post that in chat box. That contact yeah, information. It has come now. Yeah. So yeah, I correct. request that people can take a screenshot of uh, this. There's a name of Krishna dot at mesung dot com. And mobile number is there. Uh, what I have for people who can who want to see, get information. I have a lot of uh, uh, very good uh, physical literature which I can send you. Uh, especially uh, Warner has made a very good document on IC 61439 and a lot of literature is available I can send to you. So in case you want, please uh, <clears throat> let me know. Okay, so uh, with your permission, uh, Vishalji, should I uh, start the second session? Of sure, sure, sure. Please go ahead, sir. We have already uh, got crossed the limit. No, no, no. no. Uh, uh, welcome to the session of Cosma. And as I told our guests who came today that we are going to be focusing on energy management. So before you start your presentation, Hari, Hari just tell a little bit about yourself. And uh, then... First of all, uh, thank you very much, uh, Cosma, um, for its wonderful uh, people being here. In fact, it is a very stressful time, um, but still I could see its full house in, uh, in this uh, link. Um, I should uh, say hats off to you um, because it says that people are still interested in learning things in spite of being under stress. Um, with a short note about me, uh, my name is Hari Balasubramanian. Um, I am in this industry since 28 years. No doubt I was working in India the initial start of my career for almost around 11 years. I used to work for companies like Alacrity Electronics. Uh, and then I have moved into Middle East for the last uh, 16, 17, 16, 17 years. And um, I've been focusing on the uh, power quality and energy management products. I've been working with companies like Landis and Gear, Schneider Electric, and also with uh, currently with Janitsa Electronics. So this is the short note about me. Um, maybe I can uh, talk about uh, the company uh, Janitsa in, in short view, and then I can jump into the subject. Uh, I can assure you one thing, I will try to keep it as short as possible and also interesting. That's one thing I would, I always take it as a challenge to do it with me. Um, in case if you have any questions, we can always discuss it out during this because IEEE 519 is fairly a uh, old standard with a new concept in India. So we will try to explain uh, simply as much as possible so that we will be in a position to uh, go through with the standard very easily. Um, with your permission, all your permission, I'm just starting my uh, presentation about the company. Janitsa is a second generation family run business located near Frankfurt. It's somewhere north of Frankfurt. Um, we are closely around 60 years of experience in, in uh, Germany. We started our meter manufacturing somewhere in 1986 and named it under the company name called Janitsa Electronics. So um, the best part of Janitsa Electronics is we make everything within Germany. So whatever the product you get is 100% made in Germany product. We have our own production lines for PCB assembly machines. Uh, PTH and also the uh, solid state uh, devices and SMA components are all uh, assembled within the factory premises. Our R&D development, software development, everything happens under the same roof, which means there is a good coordination is ensured between the processes of R&D to manufacturing to 
marketing, all come under one roof, and that's how we maintain our uh, quality. Uh, we predominantly focus on three parts uh, of energy management, or I can say measurements. We call it as energy monitoring, power quality, and residual current monitoring. So all the three manufacturing functions. Moreover, we are only doing meters. We don't do anything else, which means we can call ourselves expert because all the time we are thinking about how the metering solutions or the measurements can be made easy for our customers. So that's how we have been, uh, that's how our philosophy is being. Uh, we have a global presence in various regional offices. In the last three, four years, Janitsa has decided to slowly move out of Germany and spread across the world, even though we have been supplying to various place, places all over the world. Um, we started having offices in USA, Ireland, uh, UK, UAE, Russia, Austria, and soon we will also be available in uh, India. That's the plan for the coming year. Um, and then we also have um, a complete uh, partner network who can help you all in giving the right solution from our products. So that's how we, uh, we go about it. Um, that's about Janitsa in short. We have uh, quite a lot of customers, ABB, a lot of uh, automobile manufacturers in Germany, um, data centers. We can name every electrical user is using our instruments. And what you see here predominantly are data centers. We are also providing uh, solutions for data centers exclusive for some of the data centers. So that's a, that's a short about our references, but we are there in every segment for critical power, manufacturing industries, utilities, infrastructure, commercial buildings, retails, hospitals where RCM can be used because uh, in hospitals, uh, residual current monitoring is one of the subject which people have to use for better understanding to avert accidents and to being, being safe. Um, we also supply some of our products in Marine as well. Coming to India, we have quite a few uh, customer base in India who are, I've just listed a few of the customers um, in various segments uh, who have been using our products for more than five years. So these are some of the customers list who we, uh, we are having it in, uh, in India. And coming back to the subject, uh, I, wish, I wanted to give you some information on the basic power quality parameters before we go into the standard. What are the power quality parameters? We, we can call it as sag and swells, harmonics, flicker, unbalance, frequency fluctuations, and all, and transients. All these parameters have three things in common. That is the time, duration, and the depth. The time is what time it is happening. The duration is how long it is happening. And depth is what is the magnitude it is happening. Say if it is an under voltage, how low the voltage is going or how high the voltage is going. If it is a harmonics, again, how much of harmonic is high and low? And what is the dura duration of this particular harmonics? If it is continuous or if it is for a short time or if it is for a longer time, all those things have to be calculated. So it's very important in power quality parameters to understand time, duration, and depth. So that's, that's how the whole uh, thing is represented for power quality. I'm not going deep into the power quality parameters because power quality as a parameter is being talked about in India, to my knowledge, at least since more than 20 years. Um, but now I understand it is very good that India is moving towards um, some standards of uh, power quality. So I will take some essential power quality standards and try to discuss it over here. The first one standard is called as IEC 61000-4-30. The second one is called as EN50160. And the other one is called a 61000-2-4. And the last one I wanted to discuss is also about IEEE-519. And that is, um, in India, as I speak to many customers and consumers across India, 
IEEE 519 is still a mystery for many of the consumers, even some utilities would like to implement. They do not know how to do it, what to do. So the process of us today is only to lighten it, to make a glimpse of how it can be done. Um, for a continuous uptime operation, the compliance to these standards becomes very important with respect to the power quality, like harmonics, current voltage and balance. So most of these standards talk about these parameters like voltage drips in short term over voltage, voltage interruptions and flicker and phase shifting. So this is, this is all the standard which are available. And uh, Janitsa is also helping customers in making these standards easy for the customer to understand. This is what is very important point, which I wanted to get it across. If you look at the standards, there is a distribution company which is delivering power to the consumers. And there is a point of common coupling where they transact energy. That is the distribution company is shaking hands with the consumer and giving power and to the consumer. And that point is called as point of common coupling. So in essence, the standard EN5160 is to be maintained by the utility. So generally, if, if, if a utility says, I, can, I am maintaining an EN5160 standard, then it means they say they are create, giving a good power frequency. They are giving a good quality of power without sags and swells. There is no voltage change. The flicker is less. There is not much of voltage unbalance and or un voltage imbalances within the limits of EN5160. And harmonics for the voltage up to 40th hour of harmonic is maintained according to EN5160. And of course, interharmonic voltage. So when the utility says that EN5160 is maintained, it, it talks only about voltage. If you look at it, it talks about only about voltage. And then the IEEE 519 comes and says, look, consumers create current harmonics. Because of current harmonics, the voltage can get distorted. And that voltage, so it is a shared responsibility of the utility and the consumer to maintain the power quality in terms of IEEE 519, which means harmonic currents is the responsibility of the consumer. The voltage is the responsibility of the utility. So it means it's a shared responsibility between the utility and the consumer. So now we know when the consumer gives so much of harmonics, it naturally distorts the voltage. And the same voltage is supplied to the other consumer, isn't it? On the same bus bar or, or on the same line. So which means the other customer who is not generating harmonics, but he is getting a distorted voltage. So that is why the utility should manage not only to support the customer who is generating harmonics, plus also to adjust their system impedance in such a way that they don't transverse the same voltage quality to the other customer. So that's a, uh, you know, there is a thin line of difference how they will have to handle uh, this particular issue because it's a shared responsibility. That's what IEEE 519 says. Now to do all these measurements, there is a base standard called as IEC 61000-4-30. We call it as class A edition three which is a testing and measurement techniques of power quality measurements. So which means when you wanted to monitor and measure power quality, there is a particular standard which tells, look, you should use a meter which has complies to the standard, which means two meters with same configuration complying to the standard will give the same result because measurement of harmonics by the, uh, by the meters or by the meter manufacturers is typically a complex process of algorithms. 
So just to create the uniformity in the algorithms, the IEEE 519 is done for 6100 dash according to 6100 dash 4 dash 3, especially the meters. So that's what this talks about. This is a, if you, if you go through it, whatever I have said, it is on this particular slide, it is very informative to give you a very clear line of understanding on how this, I will be, most of the time I will be going through in the following slides as well, the same points to make sure that we all understand perfectly. In the meantime, CEA came up with a regulation in India. Uh, I'm just taking the small paragraph hint, which says the customers should measure or all the consumers of high voltage should measure current and voltage harmonics at the point of common coupling, complying to IEEE 519 standard, using the 61000-4-330 class A meters, and they should install all the power quality meters in the point of common coupling. So this is what CEA regulation has given a guidance to all the utilities in India. So it is again, the voltage and current limitation is given in the IEEE 519. CEA has mandating all the consumers to use a 61000-4-30 class A meters. And then they ask you, ask the consumers to monitor the compliance for IEEE 519. This is what in, in, in a nutshell, CEA regulation talks about. Last year by end, Maharashtra State Electricity uh, Regulator came up with a supply code for standard performance uh, of the, you know, performance of distribution licenses, including power quality. So they have given a supply code 2020 and which indicates that all the licenses, that means discoms like whatever the power companies like Adani or, or Tata's or, or even uh, Maharashtra state um, distribution companies should follow certain amount of power quality conditions to be compliant with them. Like for example, they have very clearly stated that you can have 10 to 20 milliseconds of disturbance of up to 90 to 80% 30 times in a year, or they have said you can have five, five to 600 milliseconds of disturbance of as low as 40% to 5% to 40% of the old nominal voltage five times in a year. So there, the rules for the utility distribution companies are getting stringent, which means they will, we will have to measure it. If you can't measure it, we can't improve it. That's what Lord Kelvin says. So it is for the benefit of the consumers that they start using the right product and start measuring it and keeping a record of these kind of information. So this is a very important factor that to be considered when choosing your products while giving it to your customer as a panel builder. Further, it also states the supply code. It says that limit of current harmonic injected by designated cons consumers shall be in accordance with IEEE 519. So there is a limit on IEEE 519, which has come up. So I will be taking into what are the limits in, in the next few slides. The designated consumers shall install power quality meter at the point of supply and share the recorded data thereof. So they have asked us to have a power quality meter at the point of supply, and then we should start monitoring it. These are all for good for the consumers because when the power quality is maintained reasonably well, naturally the production losses reduces drastically. Currently, our production losses due to the power quality in India is very huge. Um, in fact, there was one report which says it runs out in few 
thousands, millions of dollars. In fact, thousands of millions of dollars. So that can help us. We could have the right gadget or the right measurement um, to make our power quality better. It is a contribution from the consumers towards the better power quality from the utility so that they can demand. So that's, that's how the whole question goes on. So the measurement undertaken or to determine compliance shall be carried out in accordance with 6100-4-7 and IEC 6100-4-30. So there's a very clear mandate coming from supply code of MERC as well over here. Now, I wanted to slightly touch upon what is 6100-4-30. The 6100-4-30 is the standard which defines how the measurement of power quality should be done, which defines clearly the algorithms, how the sample should be taken, how the measurement should be done, how the calculation should be done in the meter, and then the data should be presented. So the standard clearly defines under two categories, class A and class S. Class A is more of a specific standards and class S is more or less is the declaration, you know. People can declare this is why I'm testing it and then they will get class S. But class A, that is why I said when class A meter is used, when two class A meters are used with same configuration at the same point, then the readings would be more or less the same uh, value which you would be getting it across. So class A becomes mandatory for legal compliances. So because class A is the one which tells us how these measurements are done specifically for every parameter. And then class A standard must meet the high performance and accuracy requirement in the standard. So more, all the instruments has to be very reliably and then it has to have a standard way of calculating the parameters and giving it out as per the standards. This includes the various power quality parameters like sag, swells, frequencies, harmonics, flicker, etc. So it talks about almost all the parameters and there are new parameters in the latest edition as well, which is called as edition three. So they were talking about class B standard, which is not in vogue now. That standard is closed, I think, back way back in 2000. And I'm, I think it's somewhere in 2008 that is gone. You know, class B standard is no more available. That's why I have given it a strike date out over here. And we don't, I don't think we can get a meter with class B anywhere now because the standard of class B do not exist. Then the EN5160, if you look at what the reasons of giving um, about MERC, which has given about the voltage levels to be maintained, including sag and swell, it all complies with EN5160. So they talk about frequency, voltage magnitude, waveform, how it has to be, and then an unbalance in voltage and all those things. Generally, the, these standards do a statistical evaluation. That's what is very important. They do a statistical evaluation and then present you with EN5160. So you cannot take one day reading or 10 minutes reading and say that I'm complying to that particular standard. It has to be with respect to over a period of time. So EN50 talks about generally a one week data, what is collected and then it is done. Um, the same standard, another standard, which is predominantly accepted towards the load. Say for example, a VFD manufacturer could say that I am complying to 6100-2-4. So this is coming towards the load. When these when they comply to a certain amount of current harmonics towards the load side, it is not at the point of common coupling, but it is towards the load side. So they may comply, suppose for example, if you are having using a multiple variable frequency drives, those variable frequency drives may comply to 6100-2-4, but not essentially comply to EN5160 or IEC uh, IEEE 519 at the point of common coupling, which is at the incoming of the main gate of the power where we buy the power. So it has to be very clearly 
understood that 61000-2-4 is a standard which is used towards the load side and then IEEE 519 is used as at the point of common coupling which is where the point of purchase of power from the from the distribution company by the consumers now um, i am just taking uh, you into a travel towards inside the ieee 519 the standard is widely used in australia now in india usa um, it recommends a good practices it gives a good limits it supports the consumers who are generating harmonic itself because they know a lot of loads are going a high frequency loads, switching loads, which means that can be high amount of harmonics which is getting into the system. At the same time, supporting the utilities that consumer should take the responsibility and utility should monitor the voltage harmonic distortion from their side as well. So that is why CEA also mandates that distribution companies should have power quality meters in their outgoing feeders itself, in their distribution substations. So that's another uh, subject as of now, uh, which is completely going on. Right now, TDD is a parameter which is introduced in IEEE 519. What is TDD? TDD is basically the total current demand distortion. Generally, THD is calculated with respect to fundamental frequency, whereas TDD is calculated with respect to the load given, taken by the consumers over a period of time. So it means the reference for harmonic measurement is adjusted or made easy by IEEE 519 by measuring TDD for the consumers. So that's a very uh, valid point. And this, this is this, they call it as, you know, calculated harmonic distortion against full load level of the electrical system. Say, for example, if a consumer is um, having a 1000 kVA load, and it's the current for the 1000 kVA, which is used in the last 12 months. So they have said, even if you have, you may have a higher load um, higher contract demand, but still you can have a lesser amount of uh, demand what is happening in your network. So maybe you can take it for the last 12 months and you know calculate the total demand distortion. So this is another point which is coming up on the power quality standard IEEE 519. Now I'm going to uh, take you to how the standard asking us to do the measurement and how the statistical evaluation is done. It is a very interesting point. The standard IEEE 519 is asking us to measure readings for every 200 milliseconds and average that aggregate it over three seconds and put it in one box as I present over here. And then these three, three second value is evaluated daily for a 99 percentile of limit. So it means you will have roughly around in one day, 28,800 samples of data for individual harmonics, say one to 50 plus TDD and asking us to collect all the data and putting it on for daily evaluation purposes with against a certain limits. So this 28,800 data collected, say for example, TDD is sorted in certain order and then the 99th percentile is found out and then that limit is cross verified with a table which is given in the standard. So it is pretty complex to do when you wanted to do it over an Excel sheet because as I said, you will be doing it for 28,800 for TDD, individual harmonics for one to 50, which means for individual phases. So that is 150 parameters. And then the TDD is three parameters. So you will have 153 parameters of data managed for three seconds in a daily value. And then you will have to do the calculations, which is pretty tough to do it. And that is where the meter manufacturers come in handy to help you out in this case. The second option is the three seconds data 
is assessed over 10 minutes interval and aggregated and then that is used for weekly evaluation of 99 percentile for a limits so you can understand there is one way is daily evaluation and another one is a weekly evaluation and they have given for 99 percentile for a limit specified in the table wow it also says another way it says that the same 10 minutes interval for over a week is also assessed over 99 percentile limits so there is a limit for daily evaluation 99 percent there is a limit for 99 percentile for a weekly evaluation there is a limit for 95 percentile for weekly evaluation so because why they have given these three kinds of evaluation because different load conditions they can have different kinds of harmonic injection say for example a, a foundry uh, plants can have a very high changes within that three seconds but their limits are high very high for 99 percentile limits on a daily values whereas a textile mill for example can have a more or less a steady values where we can evaluate it for 95 percent or 99 percentile on a weekly basis so this is just a evaluation technique there are three evaluation techniques which is given for harmonics and as per the defined tables now for different voltage levels these limits are specified say for example if a voltage level of a customer is 400 volts or if a voltage level of a customer is 11 kv 33 kv 66 and maybe up to one 110 kv we have different voltage limits then the limits are specified for individual harmonic frequencies as well so which Hello. means which means we also know that limits are specified for third harmonic fifth harmonic seven nine eleven and then 13 but also for even harmonics as well in the whole picture so it means it is a complex calculations which we will have to go through then they say that isc by il ratio depending on the point of coupling location of the point of common coupling and the impedance over there which means it, it it has a possibility of adjusting the values according where the customer is in the network whether it they are very close to the substation or or the transformer or the far away from the substation or the transformer they have also the limits can also vary so there is multiple levels of uh, considerations which are given so that customers can accordingly have their harmonic can be generated accordingly so it becomes a calculation which which has to be done before we start actually complying to ieee 519 um isc is again calculated at the point of common coupling uh, and not at the substations not at the distribution substation so it is at the point of common coupling where the utility is giving power to the consumers so IL is the basically the last 12 months average peak current. I will I will also show you how this limits can help us. In in short, at the point of common coupling, we need to determine our ISC and the 12 months average maximum demand current, and then we will have ISC by IL values, and then that will be compared onto the table i will show you the table on the next slide when we do this and when we have the isc by il value then we have a legal framework with class a meters to give the utility that whether we are complying within the standard of ieee 519 or not and that's where janitsa also helps in uh, helps customers in uh, creating um, a very conducive environment of understanding uh, about the I, IEEE 519. If you look at it, the limits are actually basically done like that. For the voltage distortion, for every voltage level, we have an individual harmonic percentage what is created as a table. For current as well, 
for example i have put a current uh, current distortion limits for one table of current distortion limit from 122 kv 122 volts to 69 kv here on the right side you have the isc by il value and then you have the individual harmonics 3 to 11 11 to 17 17 to 23 23 to 35 and 35 to 50 so for according to the isc by il ratio your limits are defined so it is very clear for example if a customer is having an isc val isc by il value between 20 to 50 then his third harmonic can be up to 7% whereas the same customer similar customer who is having an isc by il value at between 50 to 100 he can have a higher level of harmonic say third harmonic can be up to 10% as per the table so it's very very clearly understood has to be understood that what level it has to be same way for the total demand distortion as well so for the lowest allowed is 5 the highest allowed is up to 20 depending on the isc by il value which means calculating the isc by il value for all the consumers plays a crucial role in determining their tdd values and the harmonic limits this is one part of it as i said there is a three way of calculation of 99 percentile weekly 99 and 95 percentile for that these limits has to be applied according to either 1.5 times this table value or one one time the table value or two times the table value the table value is according is statistically evaluated according to the weekly or daily and then the current limits so it's it's a very complex process what we understand right now here how this whole stuff works so it's a very um, i would say it's a cha very high challenge for everyone to do it that is where our power quality meter when you choose you should have certain amount of information how you wanted to do the um uh, measurement and what kind of specification it should have so the first one is as uh, shrikan just talked about ul the product um, we have a ul certification as well has to be ul certified 61000-4-30 is a standard which needs to be uh, type tested for that is a requirement for a power quality meter and then of course there are other standards like 62053 and ce which is all the normal uh, safety regulation comes in it's easier if you have a good display on your meter where you would be quickly able to understand and enough memory because memory has to be enough in the meter to show you that value of data what you have it is not the size of memory that matters it is more than it is how the memory is managed and how long you can have the data inside the memory for say for example um, if i have my iphone today if i have a 32 gb iphone it may not i may not actually have the liberty to use all the 32 because already 12 gb of data will be from the operating system so then there is no, i can't even say that it is still 32 g 32 gb of memory but how, what is the exact available useful memory and how long the data can be stored is what needs to be considered while choosing a meter and then there are a lot of communication possibilities has to be kept open in the devices so that it can the data can be uh, transmitted to a different system of course there are other measurements like voltage current and power factor and all the measurements which can also be done over here um so i will give a short checklist for what is required for IEEE 519 monitoring for the cons consumers so the meters have to be or to be permanently on the pcc the isc value should be calculated il to be recorded on a monthly basis isc by il value should be determined and this il should be configurable in the meter on a monthly basis so that the tdd is calculated accordingly 
the complaints to be recorded for daily 99 percentile weekly and 99 percentile preferably on the meters because generally what happens is if you don't if you do it outside the meter then you always have the liberty to play around with some data so it's always the possibility to uh, it's better it is done on the meter itself now i'm just taking you to a very short introduction about our meter given the opportunity um, we have a product called umg 512 pro which is a class a edition 3 approved certified meter by nmi laboratories from netherlands um, it can measure 10 milliseconds 39 microsecond transients which means uh, roughly we have around 512 samples per cycle um, on a 50 hertz network we can do a flicker measurements it has an accuracy of 0.2 s class um, modbus it can have a modbus gateway you can have a profinet and or even backnet for example if you wanted to use it with your building management systems um, and it also has an ethernet port which which complies to ftp smtp snmp and com trade formats memory is around 256 mb our usual factory um, memory recording is allowing almost around six months of data inside the meter uh, a standard configuration we also can measure residual current with these meters so we provide data information on all the three aspects of measurements power quality energy management and as well the residual current management in the meter uh, monitoring and then we also have three ways of seeing the data from the meter which means we can have a graphical display you can have a graphical spectrum you can have a waveform on the display um, you can have three years of monthly consumption on the display of the meter so these are some of the display which i can take you through in the next slide and then there is also a possibility through web service on the meter so by typing the ip address of the meter you can access what you want to do in the meter because it's very difficult to show many compliances of standard on the meter so what we have done is we have created applications inside the meter like our uh, mobile apps we have created an application inside the meter where it can give you compliance to those particular standards because quite a lot of calculations and statistical evaluation needs to be handled by the meter so we do that through a um, application and then it can be viewed through the web service i'll try to show you how it will also look like and then of course once if it comes to the software we can have all the customized dashboard data viewing and the energy reporting from the meter because you transfer the data from the meter to the software and then you can create much more um, possibility of reports and dashboard viewing um, our quickly i can tell you how the display looks like some of the pages of display i have just uh, put in over here maybe i will also show you a live meter now which is just behind me um, in the process these are some of the displays you have voltage current all in summary page and current for a particular parameter you can have real power you can have a monthly uh, energy values for three years on a monthly basis or a bar graph individual harmonics as percentage for voltage and current for all the three phases both absolute and percentage in 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 essence generally the harmonics uh, is not percentage is not told in percentage it is generally told in absolute values which is available in our meters um, and then we also have the transients which can be captured and then the waveforms can be seen plus also the oscilloscope functionality for all the um, voltage and current waveforms I am just taking you through the web page, which can have you the information. And this is a very clear uh, IEEE 519 compliance analyzed. It very clearly tells for a weekly. You can have reports for a weekly no. basis. And then, no, bol. and then you have uh, daily compliance norms mm, for, cool, from Monday to Sunday. Come on, okay. So first to seventh day of a week and then on a weekly compliance for 95% and 99%. So we, we and then it also gives which frequencies are going away from the standards. So it, it is very, Solved. whatever I have said in the last 30, 40 minutes is put in one page over here. Um, 
in our IEEE 519 application. That's what we do it. In short, I, I just wanted to uh, go to my other screen to show you how this uh, device would look like. I'm giving you a information from a live device. Hopefully you are able to see. Uh, this is a device just behind me. I have configured it to be working as if it is working on 11 kV. Um, you could see various parameters. I'm just moving the display by pressing the button over there, real power, and then the active energy. You can have the three years of monthly energy values, say 2019, 2020, and 2021 from the meter display. And then you can have the voltage harmonics as absolute values. Um, and then if I wanted to see for the other parameters for the other phases, or if I wanted to see for the current, um, or I can see for the different currents, um, the next way is seeing the voltage line writer or a current. This is how my currents are going on over here. And then uh, you can also have the transients. Whenever it is occurring, you would be in a position to see those values entered. You could see a transient on the voltage and current uh, over here. That's a possibility. And then you can have, um, I will just, yeah. You could see uh, events. You could see the phaser diagram, which is very important for, an, uh, for any commissioning engineer to see how things are happening um, during the commissioning stage. Um, and then you can see a waveform as well, how the current and voltage waveform is behaving. Yeah, so this, this comes up accordingly and also according to the flicker. So in fact, Janitsa is also working right now on IEEE 519 compliance on the meter display also. So that's the second phase which we are doing out. Maybe by uh, next month, we should be having that as well on the meter. The meter will tell you whether the weekly compliance and daily compliance is happening on the meter display itself. Um, further, we can also see um, other parameters like graphs. If you wanted to see an online graphs, we would be in a position to choose and see the online graphs for the uh, meter, where we will be able to see the online uh, current, which, which can be coming on. Even the historical values for the basic parameters for analysis sake can come in. Um, I can also show you some of the power quality standard, what it is watchdog, IEEE 519. Um, for this, I still installed, I have it for two days. That, uh, you know, since I'm using a single phase supply, it can be uh, wrong, but the essence, what I wanted to show you here is, uh, it is a THDU, harmonic voltage, TDD and harmonic current. And if I wanted to see where my failure of harmonic phase voltage, uh, harmonics voltage is failing, is basically on a daily basis over here is somewhere, it is not failing, it is just going into, the red line is here, so it is not going down. So, but it is not 100%. So that is why it is showing an orange, but still we say that is this, you know, the standard is getting passed on the daily basis. And then we have this information of individual harmonics. So this is how the IEEE, where you will also write your nominal voltage, you will also insert your short circuit current, your load current, and then the ISC by IL value is calculated. Accordingly, your compliance is tested in the meter and then given as a web page uh, for you. That's another about uh, this one. Now I'm coming back to the presentation just to uh, give a short summary. Whatever we have been talking, we have been doing meters from power quality meters to a simple energy meter, comprising to do various energy monitor management, power quality and residual current monitoring. You can choose the meter from our portfolio according to your applications um, so that you get enough of information because we don't believe in having the same meter all through the network and doing the same readings. It doesn't make any sense because every level of monitoring, every level in the network requires a different set of parameters to be monitored accordingly so that we, we can manage the system better. Say for example, in one of the uh, cases in Middle East, a customer after three years of um, you know, using the facility, they wanted to have a particular power factor uh, trend of 
the information, then they realize that meter is not having a power factor itself. So then it, it's very difficult for them to understand the power factor when they have operated the plant without noticing the power factor as a parameter. But when they wanted the data afterwards, they don't have because they have the same kind of meter all through their network, which becomes complex for them to understand their own systems. So it, that's, that's a point which I wanted to take it across that every point of in your network requires different sets of meter according to what you wanted to monitor and different places gives has to be with different values. That's why it will help the um, customer very much effectively on the long run for him. Uh, this is just a, a panel which is mounted with some meters just for you to show how it is. It is not only in HV panels, we also um, offer meters for uh, lower levels as well. Plus we also have our grid based software which can be used, which can be used to communicate with any kind of devices. And then we can have it with a very um, intriguing um, information about your electrical networks through Sankey diagrams, through heat maps, through KPI bar graphs where people can very understand their electrical system better and take appropriate action. So I think um, I'm just finishing off with information, what I, I have to give it to you today. I'm open for questions. And in case if you have any questions, I'm there. Misung is also available uh, for further information. Um, we will be happy to share with you the inf required information, what you want. So thank you very much. And I'm open for question. And again, um, I have to stress this point with the state of condition, with the stress we are all in. Thank you for attending this in full house. And I thank you very much from on behalf of Janitsa Electronics. Thank you. Can you unshare, uh, Hari? Yes. Yeah. So uh, there are some questions in the chat box. So if you can visit yeah, the chat I will, box. I will, I will go through that in just a minute. Yeah. So, uh, I think Apau sir has also answered some questions here. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, good evening, sir. <laughs> yes. Apau sir, can you put on your video? Um, yes, shared by how to calculate IEC values. Yes, sir. Yes. One second. Yes. Apau sir is... Um, is basically the former um, electrical inspector, um, chief in electrical inspector for Tamil Nadu. So he will be in a position to add a lot of value in this uh, in this meeting as such. Um, Opposer, they are asking how to calculate an IOC value. I think I will leave it to your. Uh... First, let me let me welcome Opposer on behalf of. No, no, no. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I happen to see uh, if in the chat box. I happen to see uh, query, so that's why I replied for that query. Yes, it's, uh, understanding that I uh, gained from the utility side, I have put the answer to that query. <laughs> if you go through, then because yes. there is a lot of uh, uh, difference within the discount in adapting the ISC values, which changes ultimately the uh, the ISC by L that we discussed in our various forum. And uh, in the TNEB, Transit Co in Tamil Nadu, they are going to implement. So they are in a way to arrive at, uh, they adopted some model. And that model only I have given in the chat box. It is, I, I think it is a very uh, in, uh, useful information uh, which is there in the chat box. It is a bit technical. It is assigned by the DISCOM from the impedance. You should also calculate the impedance of your conductors until it comes to your point of common coupling and then use it for uh, calculating your ISC at the PCC. So that's what in short uh, it says. Um, in fact, uh, Mr. Upendra Prohit has asked, it is IoT based now. Um, I think he is asking about internet of things. Yes, our meters are um, available on an IoT basis. Even if you wanted to have push data, it is possible to get a push data from our meters into a cloud service. You can also have a power quality analysis um, 
In fact, Mr. Shakir Meeran has asked, over quality and usually becomes important when there are issues of problems at site and it can be used, handheld devices are used. Handheld devices uh, predominantly give, a, give you an information about how a particular load is behaving. But if you wanted to do a compliance to a particular standard, it is advised you do the measurement on a long term on, on the uh, point of common coupling and things like that. So you will have to have also a permanent monitoring at certain places in your uh, network to ensure that you do it. You can also use uh, portable meters, not only from Janitsa, but also from other companies as well. Um, accordingly, accordingly, how what you wanted to measure, you can always use it, that is possible. Um, is there any other question I'm missing? There's somebody who's requiring a quotation. I've sent him the email ID. That's fine. That's fine. It should, we will be happy to, uh, myself, ourselves, and uh, Mizum would be happy to uh, support you with further information. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a time which we have to just give the information. So uh, we can give you more information as and when it comes, uh, comes to us. Yeah. Please feel free to write to us uh, on our contacts. Thank you. So the details of the contact is there on the screen just now. Uh, anybody can just take down the things or they can do a screen, screen save and uh, contact uh, either Krishna Dhanarkar or on our website or contact the phone number that is there. Uh, I hope everybody has taken down this information. And uh, I'm just closing down the share and um, uh, I now would like to hand over the mic to I, uh, I think uh, uh, Vaman, would you like to ask some question? Anybody else want a question? No. Okay, Vishal, sir, I think we have done yeah. the session. Thank you. Thank you, Farooq Bhai. Uh, thank you, everyone. And uh, I request Mr. Uh, our director, Mr. Ramni ji, to give a word of thanks. Uh, Ramni ji, unmute. Karke. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Thank you, uh, Mr. Farooq. Uh, you've been the real uh, person behind the scene and, uh, you know, uh, taken a lot of trouble, taken a lot of initiative to organize this uh, whole program. It's been very educative. And uh, for those of you who uh, probably don't know Mr. Farooq uh, sufficiently, he's been the person who built Mesang to a fantastic, uh, or as a fantastic organization. And then, uh, you know, the country, the content of that, he sold it to Mitsubishi. And uh, then, you know, uh, although he did not sell his brand of uh, Mesang, and uh, uh, today he is, uh, uh, he, he, and then after that, he has been constantly looking at what should he be doing next. And then these are the wonderful products which he has uh, decided to bring to India. And uh, he's doing a fantastic job on that. Thank you so much, uh, Farooq Saab. You've been uh, with the whole uh, program right from conception to execution. And it's been uh, really, really uh, uh, very, very, uh, you know, a lot of learning in this. Particularly when uh, Mr. Srikanth uh, took over the session with uh, Wona, it was uh, very nice to note uh, you know, that you have a software in the website which can be used by any one of us free of cost. And when we use the, uh, the software, we are able to give a report to the customer. And, uh, you know, the amount of uh, impression that would create for the customer in terms of your panel being aligned with IEC 61439 is uh, definitely something which one should take note of and uh, avail of all these kind of calculations which are available. Even if uh, you know you just want to play around with uh, the temperatureized calculations and short circuit calculations, you want to know how you how to design the panel yourself. All this is available on the Wona website uh, and it's free of cost. And of course, uh, it's always a, a great honor for uh, India to see that uh, there is a there is an Indian out there in. Uh, Germany representing not just the Indian market, but an extension of uh, what goes into the Middle East and uh, other parts of the world. So that's that's something which really feels good for us uh, uh, as Indians. Uh, Mr. Haribala has uh, explained the entire uh, concept of uh, you know the the various standards associated with metering. And uh, as he quoted Lord Kelvin, uh, you know, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. So that's the fundamental. And that is uh, 
that is how uh, we are able to control conserve energy and uh, really do all the right things as far as uh, optimizing power is concerned uh, our president sanjeev bhai of course gave an excellent uh, introduction of cosma and uh, you know uh, one thing which is uh, uh, which i'd like to appeal to all uh, non members of cosma is please join us this is uh, you know it gives you a, a, a small indication of what we are trying to do for our electrical community there's many many more activities as what uh, sanjeev bhai elaborated and then anand also joined him and said that you know how we are trying to have vice chairmen in different parts of uh, india like for example this this particular program was again coordinated by mr sanjeev loda who is the uh, vice chairman from rajasthan and uh, you know we need more and more involvement uh, and then automatically we will all evolve together cosma is a beautiful organization and uh, it really uh, you know brings us together in terms of seeing how we can collaborate and grow together there's a lot of learning there's a lot of uh, camaraderie a lot of uh, brotherhood and you have to experience it uh, and then you know you'll really see the benefits of it uh we also uh, you know need to be thanking vishal who has been uh, very consistent in the way he has been uh, helping us in with all this it and uh, you know today it's it's so uh, nice to see that uh, on the one hand we of course had uh, more than 100 people and all that within the first few minutes of uh, the program having got started and then it was vishal who came forward and said that we should put it on facebook live also and he's been doing this consistent over the past so many webinars so that sort of really helps uh, uh, the people to avail of this kind of technology transfer uh, so uh, that's it from my side uh, uh, thank each and every one of you for uh, having joined this uh, uh, webinar with an open mind to understand what are the latest technologies and how you could individually uh, benefit by being the channel which Uh, takes this technology to uh, the electrical distribution in india and overseas uh, at large yeah thank you very much thanks uh, thanks so much and uh, that's it from my side